And we are back, everybody, in commemoration of the Micronesian Area Research Center up at UOG's 50th anniversary. We have Monique and Lavon here to talk about a taste of history. Ladies, hafa and thank you for joining me. Hafa thank you. Uh, okay, I'm assuming that little illusion with taste and everything like that involves some sort of the culinary arts, Monique. Yes. Oh, um, yes, we love food here. <laughs> Who so doesn't do love food on Guam? <laughs> so do we. Yeah. Um, the, the taste of history came about from the idea of um, we were looking through the Guam recorders and really started noticing um, in those um, that they were talking about the different recipes that, um, that featured local um, produce or local foods. And, um, and so I started to get more interested in it. And um, the idea of um, that our, even when we think about um, how we interact with each other, um, it does tend to revolve around food. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, it was really just kind of thinking about what is that connection between history um, and our sense of our identities, as well as um, where food takes place in all of that. It really is a cultural sensibility of our people, Levon, because, you know, food can be for us tomorrow's a communications topic, a conversation topic, a form of communication itself, a form of commerce, and everything. And we were just talking about bananas before we started this segment Correct. and everything. So <laughs> yes. how, how prominent do bananas on Guam play in, in like the history of oh, wow. tasting on Guam? <laughs> and produce in general on Guam? Well, we will, in, in this food tasting, there will be a couple of recipes that um, I believe we will be featuring some bananas. Excellent. All right, mm -hmm. so um, i like to go ahead and add that we've, uh, uh, we're working with B&G uh, Pacifica. Uh, their chef, John uh, Fernandez, will be creating these uh, recipes for us. And so we're really looking forward to it. I, we've done a tasting already at Mark, and we were well pleased with the food that he prepared. We gave him, um, you know, the artistic uh, license to go and make, the creative license to make these, menu, these recipes taste awesome but we also wanted him to try and stay as close to the recipe as possible because we wanted to show how um, our people were able to use the resources that they had available to them and so he, uh, he did such a great job and we were quite pleased with the food and no offense intended but i don't pity either of you so you, you brought in a master <laughs> of the culinary arts to prepare these wonderful meals and you had the arduous task of having to taste them oh. yes. We should all be so unfortunate. <laughs> <laughs> it was actually kind of an interesting experience um, because when we were going through that, um, uh, going back to your, your initial question is um, about agriculture. Um, in the Guam Recorders, one of the regular features was actually um, the Guam Agricultural Fair. It was an annual um, event. Mm. Um, and so um, they would have things um, such as uh, prizes for um, the largest um, uh, breadfruit or you know uh, things like that um, and so um, to be able to taste the the dishes um, you know that that were prevalent back then um, that was that was fun um, and then I really started thinking about you know in terms of um, food preparation um, and how you know uh, today we are so fortunate to have all of these um, all of these gadgets and things like that um, to to help us in you know making our food prep quick um, and um, in these recipes, knowing what time they were, when um, you know, um, it was going to be a labor of love. You know that that it was just going to be a time-consuming process, and it made you think about where have we come from, you know, and where are we today in terms of um, society. Uh, that's an interesting point. And may I ask either of you can jump in on this? Um, when you put the historical perspective on it, the way food has changed in the various generations and eras for Guam. You know, you've got the pre-Spanish era, you know, mm -hmm. the pre-war, post-war era, the more modern area, and we get like, you know, chefs like Peter Duenas who's doing like the whole fusion thing with tomorrow cooking and everything like that. Mm -hmm. How do you reflect that in, in how you're presenting this material? You mean uh, for that evening or yeah. for our, our event? Because there's so many different styles of, right. you know, the food has changed so much for us. Right. Um, as Levon had said earlier, you know, it really was one of those, uh, what did it taste like? What was the original, um, the original flavor? Um, and that was one of the things that we tried to, um, we tried to keep in terms of the foods themselves. Um, one of the other things that we're hoping to um, feature are um, an array of cocktails that, um, that feature tuba. And so with that mm. one, we're actually going to do a flip where um, we will have a traditional, um, a traditional drink and then see how we can modernize, you know, um, the, the flavors to, to suit something that, you know, is a little more modern. Oh, interesting. 
You, so you could be very cosmopolitan about a cosmopolitan, perhaps. Or. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> don't ask me where I came up with that. I, I, I don't even know what's up here sometimes. So, Levon, I'm, I'm absolutely sold. I'm in. I, I think this is a wonderful event. Uh, are there tickets that are being sold right now, and where and when can we get them? Okay, we do have um, the tickets are $50 a piece, and um, you can uh, purchase it um, directly from the mark. You're welcome to come in and, and purchase your ticket there. But um, the endowment, the University of Guam endowment, has a link on their website where um, you know people can go in and actually purchase directly through that link. Very nice. Yes. With a credit card, it probably takes like less than forty seconds, and oh, you're in, you're out. Yes, and we're uh, we're so excited about this evening, uh, Jason, because on, uh, on top of all that, we have um, several entertainers that will be headlining our event. We have uh, Candy Tamman, who is reputed to be the story a uh, storyteller in mm -hmm. his song and his his grandson mm -hmm. uh, Candy Tamman will also be performing for Works us right over there in 984 right <laughs> and and Danny De Leon Guerrero and then we will have a special guest performance from one of our faculty uh, Joey Franquist so we're excited about it um, the museum is featuring the Paul Jacolet uh, visions of Micronesia and Asia and um, that whole exhibit is coordinated by one of our faculty, Dr. Donald Rubenstein, and so we've asked the museum to keep that exhibit, exhibit open so that our guests can go through as well and, and appreciate the artwork uh, from the Jacquelet collection. All right, very nice. So uh, what day of the weekend at what time? This, is, uh, this event will be on November 30th. Uh, it's a Thursday evening from 6 to 9 p.m. All right, so next Wednesday night. Correct. All right. Well, thank yes. you so much, ladies. We really appreciate it, and we can't wait to see you there. Jason, we'd like to thank our sponsors. We okay. have... We'll um, tell you what. We'll put that in the show notes for YouTube because we've got to go to a commercial break. Okay. All right. Awesome. Thank you so much. We'll make sure to put that in there. Okay. Thank All you. All right. We will see you on the flip side of this break. Please stay tuned.